Hey everybody, how you doing? It's Patrick from Vicious Computers and welcome to a brand new tutorial slash guide. I'm up late. It is almost 2 a.m. I've been waiting for Windows updates and installing stuff to bring you some really cool news. If you've watched all my videos or heard me talk about things in the past, you've heard me talk about when Windows 10 added Linux in the background. It was kind of like a sneaky under the table thing that did it first and then it started getting a little bit more publicity. I use it all the time at work because I work in IT and sometimes there's things I can do within Linux that I can't do in Windows and having two separate computers isn't always ideal. The great thing about this is it's not a virtual machine that I have to get onto and mount points and do this and that and the other and it's not a separate computer so if I want to work on a file in Linux then I don't have to worry about putting on a thumb drive or doing something crazy. It's all tied together and it's working beautifully. I've used it for a long time. Now the news is this Windows subsystems for Linux now has a new version. Version 2.0 just came out. And I'm gonna show you how to get it installed and updated today because there's a few things you need to do. First of all, uh, prerequisites. You have to be on Windows 10 to have WSL. And it's the version one has been around for a long time. So chances are as long as you're on Windows 10, you meet the requirements for that. Uh, if you ever want to know what kind of Windows version you are, go to a command prompt, or PowerShell in this case, type in WinVer, short for Windows version, and you'll be able to see what version you're on and what build you're on. This is the latest May of 2020 build, and this is the requirement or newer for WSL2, which is what I just got done installing. So that's number one. Second thing is how you actually enable these features. So there's the easy way and there's the IT way. <laughs> so let me show you the easy way first. Uh, let's go to our control panel. And go to your programs and features. Click on turn features on or off. So WSL version one to turn that on. You just go down here and look for Windows Subsystem for Linux. Check that box. It's going to install it and it's going to make you reboot. And after that, you have the ability to install Linux underneath of your Windows 10. The WSL 2 that just came out added another prerequisite. Now you also have to check Virtual Machine Platform. And again, that will download and install and you'll have to reboot. Keep in mind, this has been the case forever. Virtual machines require VTX, uh, virtualization technology. So your CPU has to support it. Nowadays, there's no PC that really doesn't support that. And sometimes, I've seen this at work, you'll have a computer where the CPU supports it, but the BIOS has it disabled. So if that's the case, make sure you check your BIOS and those things are enabled. So once you have those two features installed, the next thing you need is your Linux distribution. And that, of all places, is actually on the Microsoft Store. So let's go into the store and we'll just search for Linux. And once you get there, you'll see that you have Ubuntu, you have Kali, you have Debian, you have all these different options for Linux. It will install Linux and I th think there was a reboot required. I'm not too sure, I don't remember. But I've already got 18.04 Ubuntu installed. Now we can get to it a couple ways. We can go to the start menu and actually find Ubuntu in our start menu and click on it. Or I can just type it in. Ubuntu 18.04. Boom, here I am. I am now in Ubuntu. So things like LS actually work <laughs> instead of having to um, do DIR, which it will work in Linux because it has aliases, but the other way around doesn't work. And I do this all the time. I can do DIRs from, uh, from Windows, but if you do LS, it's like well, I'm in PowerShell. PowerShell has an alias as well, but the command prompt doesn't. So let's uh, clear the screen up here. Let's talk about a couple of uh, really neat things about this and why you'd want to do it. For one, again, you don't need two computers. You don't need a dual boot. You don't have to do any of that crazy stuff. Here's where it gets really nice for me. Uh, in IT, there's been times, uh, say, using FTP, for example, the Windows version of FTP didn't work with the IBM i-series mainframes that I was working with. And I had to use either uh, Linux, which worked perfectly, or I had to do something like FileZilla and actually change some configurations behind the scenes. 
kind of a sneaky way of making it work with FileZilla, but with Linux, it just works straight up. And again, I had to get permission to have a Linux computer on the network and this and that and the other. It was easier just to put it on my Windows 10 machine. And um, other cool stuff about it, I write Windows automation and scripts, like for example, um, this guy right here, you know, turns on my switches, tells me my temperatures. This is a, written with AutoIt, and I write lots of automation in AutoIt, but I can't use AutoIt for Linux because it doesn't exist. But now that I can use the Linux terminal from within Windows, it lets me use my Windows scripting and automation to do Linux automation. And that's really cool. Uh, WSL2, so WSL added, you could use git, you could use a, a lot of the terminal commands. And there was a lot of stuff you could do, but it wasn't running on a true Linux kernel. What WSL2 has added is a true Linux kernel. So it should be pretty much the full version of Linux as far as I know. So the next video that I have coming up after this one, I'm going to put that to the test because there's something I really want to try. The other thing is that means Xming should work. I think Xming might have worked before, and that is through SSH. You can do uh, basically display through SSH, and that means you can run graphical programs, even though technically the implementation is only terminal based. So I'll have to play around with that and see if I can give you a video on it. Now, some tips and tricks or tricks of the trade, things you'll learn from me that you won't see or hear anywhere else. One of the things I found out. And this is what really made it amazing for me. Say we're, we're let's go back to um, Ubuntu here. And you can see where I was playing around with it earlier. I already kind of started getting prepared for this tutorial. Uh, let's do nano and go into nano, which is our terminal based text editor. And hello world. And we'll write that out. Oop, write it out to an actual name, it'd be great. Boom. All right, I exit out of that. So we should have our file in there. So what I'm doing is I just created a text file for the purposes of this demonstration. Say you're using this Linux kernel, you're losing, using Linux, and you're not really super comfortable with editing through uh, Nano, which I just used or whatever terminal emulator uh, text editor you have, now you have the ability to use your Windows programs to do things in Linux without moving your files because this entire Linux file system exists on your Windows computer. It's hidden, but I'll show you where it's at. So this file we just created, now I can edit it with Notepad++. So here's how we get to these. Let's open up our file explorer. Let's go to my user profile. So C drive, users, go to your user profile. Go to app data. Now remember, this is a hidden folder. So if you have not gone into your view options and gone to, uh, come on, load up from view and then show hidden files, folders, and drives. If you don't have that checked, you won't see hidden folders. But another tip and trick for you, even if you're on someone's computer, like as an IT guy who doesn't have hidden things displayed, you can still manually type them into the address bar and get to them even if they're hidden. So from app data, we're going to go to local. And then from local, we're going to go to packages. And from packages, you're going to find the distribution that you installed. This is Ubuntu 18.04 here. So, yep. Here's our file system, and we're gonna go into local state, and we're gonna go into the root file system. And that's my home directory where I was. And there's the profile, and here you go. Here's that file we just created, and I can say edit with Notepad++. So now I can say that I made changes to from Windows 10, Notepad++. Save that, and let's go back to our terminal. And let's do nano, and let's open up that tutorial. And look at that. So do you see how powerful that can be? The fact that I have Linux capabilities and Windows capabilities rolled into one environment where I can share programs and share access and share files. 
Now also the last thing to show you is that it works both ways. So my root, if I look here, I'm under home right now. If I go to my root of my file system for Linux, bin boot dev Etsy home, if we go back here, you'll see where those line up. So I can't go any lower than this file system. However, if we go to our mounted locations, Look what we have access to. All of our drive letters from Windows are automatically mapped for us. So my C drive, E drive, F drive, H drive, and S drive, are all corresponding to the drives that I have on my computer. So I can actually go into, I don't know, let's see, this is where I save all my videos at H drive. So I can say, let's change directory to the H drive. And now you can see all my files that are on my Windows system from within the Linux environment, which means, for example, if I have, let's see, I'll just create a text file real quick. And we'll say Linux is working with my Windows files. So this is a, something that was on my Windows computer. And now I can use Linux to interact and work on my Windows files. And that's exactly where my next video is going to come in because I have something really cool I want to do with this. So keep in mind, let's go back and review. Windows 10 is a requirement for WSL. You have to have the newest version of Windows 10 as of May 2020. If you want to use WSL2, you go and get your distributions from the Windows Store. And I don't want to close the video off yet because I want to throw a couple of bonus contents at you. So let's, let's exit out of this. Uh, what I'm using right now, I just thought I'd let you know. Let's go back to the store. I kind of like it so far. And if we go search for terminal... I think I'll find it. Windows Terminal is what this is. So it opens up PowerShell instead of the command prompt by default. And it's got some syntax highlighting, as you can see, which is nice. And then you've also got the ability to do multiple tabs. So I think this is pretty neat. One of those things you might want to grab while you're out there doing all this. The other thing is, let's, let's talk about PowerShell. For the IT guys, if you want to deploy this out, if you want to write scripting to install it so you can pass it around to other people, you're not going to be able to tell, uh, automate clicking and doing all this stuff to go to the add features. What you want to do is use DISM. So let me give you those commands real quick. DISM for enabling the Linux subsystem is this. So the DISM exe online. So we're going to pull that down from the Microsoft online. We're going to enable the feature, and that is our feature name. So let's clear that. And for WSL2, we're going to use DISM. And this is going to be called Virtual Machine Platform. So just keep that in mind. That way you can write that into a script and get these things installed on computers remotely or administratively. And the last thing, the last piece of bonus content, and I haven't tried this yet, so this will be live. And I'll probably need to re rerun that as administrator. Is now that I have WSL2 on my machine, I want to make that my default so that when I open up Ubuntu, for example, that we're using the new version instead of the old version. So that should be WSL set default. I wonder if there's going to tab complete this. Nope. Version. Oh, what happened? I was thinking about my tab completion. Default version 2. And let's see. So I need to get some kind of update before I can run it. But other than that, that's pretty much it. Let's, let's see. I'm going to jump offline for a minute and come right back and tell you what you need to do to fix this. All right, I'm back. And that didn't take very long at all. Just about two minutes to resolve this issue. So I'm really happy that it was easy and smooth.
And uh, so luckily it told us what to do. It told us to go to this website and I went to that website and let's pull that up real quick. And it's not very big, it's not very complicated. Uh, that's not the same one. The page it told us to go to before, I guess I lost the link to it because I already closed it. But basically it just had a link to download this MSI to manually update the kernel. Just ran this MSI by double click on it, double clicking on it. And then when I ran my command again to set the default version, by the way, look at that. See how this nice terminal is keeping our memories. It, it didn't say I need to update the kernel. Instead, it just says, hey, check out the updates. And a couple of cool things about these uh, new WSL2 is the updates for it will come directly from Windows Update, so it'll stay up to date. That's pretty neat. And it looks like everything is working now. So I hope everyone was able to enjoy this video just from the entertainment aspect of it. But most importantly, I hope that you got something educational and useful out of it. I think Linux is a great thing and you should definitely spread the love. It's not just useful for IT nerds like me. It's really good for just about anybody to have this in their toolbox. And if you're into the home automation and the smart home and a lot of other cool crafty things I think more people are getting into, you're going to find a lot of the, the big guys that really make those things happen do a lot in Linux. So you might need access to Linux to use some of the programs they've written. To you Convert is a good example. I just had hacked uh, some smart switches the other day using that. And I had to use Linux for that. And now, technically, I probably can do a lot of that stuff right from here. So once again, this was Patrick from Vicious Computers. I hope you enjoyed yourself, and I will see you next time.